So I'm uh, sh switching out the uh, uh, the clutch uh, master slave cylinder, I think is what it's called. Um, the one that's on there is it's not that old. It's maybe maybe a year old. Uh, but it's last uh, week or so I noticed that it's uh, been been, been uh, leaking by the uh, by the pedal or really it's leaking by this little rubber flange thingy is it's been pouring out um, so you know before it gets worse or anything I'm just got this new one I'm gonna replace it because it wasn't very expensive anyway um, I already uh, drained the, um, uh, the brake fluid but I'm gonna set the phone down on the uh, on the tripod and start uh, unbolting um, the uh, uh, the clutch uh, master slave cylinder. Um, the the good thing about this one is it's actually easier to remove. Um, if you saw the video with the the brake booster, the brake booster has four bolts from the inside that are holding it in place, and this only has two bolts, and they're from from the from the firewall. So that's all that's really holding it. From the uh, underneath by the pedal, it's essentially the same process as your uh, brakes. Hopefully, I can get everything in view. Um, 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 um. It. I'll try to point at it from where we're at, from our angle, and hopefully, you can see it. Here is the. Uh, the uh, arm, I guess, for the uh, uh, the cylinder itself, and it's poking through. We just have to. Uh, there's a little pin, no different than uh, the one over here for the for the brakes, and you follow the same process. Okay, so I'm pressing lightly on the clutch pedal. And the sensor is right right here, but you know on the other side of this little bracket that I'm got my finger on. So you want from what I can see the distance of um look a little bit higher and you uh but right literally where my finger my middle finger's pointed is the uh, the hole where uh, the clutch pedal and that uh, clutch uh, the cylinder meet. Let's see if I can get the from my angle get this uh, pin in. Don't know if I'll be able to, but I will try. It's tough to. Everything is in the way. Let's see if I can. Okay. Hopefully, you can see that in there. We have to make things easier. We will have to remove this uh, hook. So, this tank. So, the lighter fluid. Let's just make it easier to get to that door. That nut will be uh, clutch on.
as always, we want to have a, a towel down here to catch any of that excess uh, rake work. Uh, some of our maggots kind of heavy. In those moments where you don't have a room to uh, grab the nuts that you're uh, getting loose. Yeah, yeah these maggots are lifesaver in those moments. She goes. All I'm going to do is measure the distance, the right distance with the new one and the reinserter. And I'll start uh, putting the lines back together and all that. Let's So we got the pin on, and then the other little clip for that for that pin. Um, now it's just a matter of bleeding the brakes and tightening up the um, 
all the bolts and nuts. But I think ultimately this is why I was having issues to begin with way back when, when the uh, 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 clutch mass slave cylinder or master cylinder that was installed before, like a year ago or so. I think that's why when I started having all those issues, it was never adjusted to the right uh, length. Um, is that never actually installed the, the the one that was on here before the one that started leaking? Uh, my nephew did, and I, and I didn't know any better at the time I saw, so I just assumed that it was on there correctly. Um, uh, but no big deal. Now I know know for certain where where the uh, slave cylinder, the distance at the that pedal should be at and all that. I have a, a little better understanding of how it works now. Um, but yeah, it's uh, ultimately I think when we in, uh, this one was installed, it was never adjusted to, to the uh, proper length. It was installed to the length it is now. And uh, I think that's ultimately, again, because uh, that's when I actually started having issues when this was installed. But let me uh, bolt everything back up. Uh, try. I've never done it before. I'm going to try and get this uh, hose on from underneath. Because the other one's kind of old. And I just as soon replace it now while I'm, while I'm doing all this. And uh, I'll bleed the brakes and see... Uh, if uh, uh, did the job right, so I got the lines on there nice and tight. Not leaking, thankfully. Um, okay, so we have to bleed the the clutch. The clutch system is no different than bleeding your brakes. Um, yeah, it sucks when you're by yourself and takes even longer it gets tedious um, but since we installed a new uh, clutch uh, master slave cylinder and uh, that new that new hose down below it's gonna take a little while to uh, build up pressure so we want to Do that and then use an object to wedge between uh, your seat and uh, the clutch so it's completely pressed and then go go down and release the uh, go by the slave cylinder release that little nipple and try to let some of that air or air bubbles out and just follow the process until until you get all the air out and uh, get your clutch working back the way it should So I've been pumping, going at it for a little bit. It did take a little bit of a bit of work, but um, she finally uh, I finally got most of the um, air bubbles out out of the lines, and um, the uh, clutch pedal finally got some uh, some pressure. And uh, I just I just pumped it and watch. Well, this is what you want to see uh, after you release the nipple. Oops, my bad. But that's a clear sign that you're. Uh, the pressure's uh, getting good, and uh, and uh, the clutch is starting to get back to normal. At least I can press it with my, either with my foot or my hand. 
and uh, it's just got a pretty good pressure. So I'm gonna do this a few more times just to, you know, for peace of mind as always, and uh, I'll be back. Okay. Uh, so I got the trucks running through her gears and all that, got her adjusted, just, you know, found that sweet spot. And as I'm making those adjustments, I realized another thing. This is, you know, this, again, this is new for me. Another one of those things is trial and error. You can physically adjust the shaft from inside the truck. Um, since the shaft is free flowing, I'll, I'll do this, I'll try to explain this from out here so I don't have to be upside down in there explaining it. Let's just pretend that the, this is the pedal and she's already connected. Just for explanation's sake. Um, you see how I'm turning the shaft right here? It's still turning. You can literally do that, do that with your fingers while you're down there. Okay. And while you're doing that, let's see if we can get a better angle. You see the location of the shaft itself right now? That's actually not the right spot. It needs to go further forward. Find a... Uh, give me a second. Okay. i use the screwdrivers a little better better uh thing to use let's pretend that it's that pin the pin that we put pinned to the to the pedal that, that makes the pedal to this fork okay you're down there and you need to make your adjustments uh again you can physically make them down there with by hand and this nut this adjustment nut is really just there to uh See if I can loosen the sucker a little bit. Well, you know what? It actually helps you make those adjustments as well. Uh, but again, but you can make those adjustments yourself. And I realized as I'm making those adjustments, uh, if this shaft is uh, see how it's uh, extending right there. That's actually, while you're doing that, it's increasing the distance between the pedal and the sensor that it's pressed against, the clutch sensor, that uh, activates and deactivates the sensor when you press uh, press the clutch, your, your pedal, or, or release it. So you want to turn the shaft clockwise Till uh, again, you know, I got my lines all completely uh, bled. There, that's not an issue. So it's just a matter of finding that sweet spot. And I got it. I found it as you know, as I'm down there, I have the engine running to make things quicker. But as I'm turning the shaft, that was about the sweet spot right there. And then I turned them the nut all the way over here to uh, uh, as a stopper you know so that the the fork doesn't uh, start to ride forward or cause any any or ride back and cause any more issues um, so that is the the easiest way to make your adjustments on the fork you don't even have to ultimately you don't actually have to take your clutch master cylinder out at all you can make your adjustments from the truck so that's cool and um so that's about the sweet spot right there at least it was for me i don't know it might be different for you i'm gonna turn the truck on and see how she shifts hopefully She'll get through everything, okay? I 
Here we go. Turn the volume down on the radio when it turns on. It's kind of loud. I reverse. Eh, might still have just a shade, just a shade of a Asian getting in. Just a shade. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Here's a good luck hoping to reverse. There we go. So that's a load off of that. Um, but yeah, this is a, a good learning experience for me because I, I had no idea. You know, you know, uh, I knew that the clutch pedal activates, uh, you know, lets it shift, but I didn't know all those details that we just learned, you know, so it's good, to, uh, it was good for me to physically mess with that and learn, learn that, because I didn't know that, so, I'm gonna edit this sucker, put all this footage together, and, uh, I will upload it, and, um, hopefully it makes sense, and I didn't make a mess of things, and, uh, I will see you.